Hi everyone, it's Connor here from Durham Hearing Specialists. I hope you're doing well and welcome to another video. A fair warning here, this isn't going to be a pretty earwax removal because it really isn't an earwax removal. This is a case of keratosis obturans, so, uh, which is essentially a very dense plug of dead skin very deep in the ear, which uh, causes extreme pain, hearing loss, and can lead to an enlargement of the, uh, the ear canal due to a process called bone resorption. So if you're interested in learning a bit more about that condition, keratosis obturans, and what exactly it is and how it forms, um, I'll link you to another video where I discuss it in depth. Um, but we are going to see a little bit of bleeding here. Um, the ear canal is going to be fairly swollen, it looks a little sore, and um, there's also going to be a fair amount of debris and keratin left behind, so it's not going to be a complete removal. But um, what we're aiming to do here is make the patient more comfortable, resolve that pressure, uh, resolve the hearing loss and expose the eardrum and make sure that it's not perforated. So uh, what we have here essentially is a very, very deep plug of keratin. Now the backstory is this patient actually reports that his ear felt has been feeling blocked for about a year, but due to the pandemic and probably some anxiety, um, he's kind of been putting it off, putting it off, putting it off. Within the last three weeks, it's starting to get very painful. So he's seen his doctor twice. Um, the doctor is not referred him to a, a specialist or a practitioner of any kind, the doctor can't remove the earwax. So the doctor has basically said just use drops and use more drops and use more drops. And um, the patient has not only taken huge amounts of painkillers, probably too much, but has been using all sorts of drops, which has probably led to the, the keratin plug expanding a little bit, which has been hurting him a lot. It's trouble sleeping, he's just had an awful, awful time. So this is, coming to see me for suction is really a last resort, despite how scared he is of the procedure. Um, so you can see I'm just loosening this plug here. I, I rather suspect that he probably dosed up on quite a lot of painkillers before coming to see me because he was fairly tolerant during this procedure. He, he was very still, you know, didn't, you know, obviously there was no screaming or anything like that. So he was, he was um, a good patient, basically. Now we've removed this front part of the plug now have a look at what's behind that. So you can see we have a little bit of bleeding. I mean, it's, it might well be serosanguinous discharge. I mean, it looks, it looks a little watery, um, or it might just be bleeding with, um, you know, active bleeding with a little bit of serous discharge mixed in there. Um, but I mean, that's, that's pretty much the extent of the bleeding. This is a young, fit, healthy patient, so they're not on blood thinners or anything, so, um, you know, you may ask, well, why didn't you stop the procedure due to that bleeding? And although, the, you know, obviously we try and avoid bleeding as much as possible, but it does happen sometimes, and this is not a huge amount. But even so, we've not really resolved the problem. Now, as I mentioned before, the patient has no choice but to come and see me for this procedure. He has not been referred by, to ENT by his doctor. So I really wanted to just get a, go a little bit further, and if I can just see the eardrum, and get the patient to do a valsalva and, and see the eardrum flex, then I'll be happy, which is what I'm aiming for here. So going back in again, and what we're aiming to do now is just kind of very gently strip away this keratin, because again, this is a very sore ear. There's some edema on the left-hand side. So just to the left of the frame here, you can see how the ear canal's kind of swollen outward, which is, you know, certainly not characteristic of, of well, it's not characteristic of the ear canal generally, but it's certainly not characteristic of the bony portion of the ear canal, which is just a very thin amount of skin directly on bone, temporal bone. Um, so you can see here it looks kind of cushiony. You'll see that a little bit more where this, how, how kind of pillowy this, the skin is. But um, I mean, edema is essentially a collection of fluid in tissue. Um, so again, you will have, you probably will have seen edema many times before. You know, if you um, a lot of elderly patients have edema in their legs. You will have heard of pulmonary edema as well, where you get fluid in the lungs. And it is very, very common. Um, can be caused by lots of different things. Um, so, I mean, if you have... The most common form of edema is when you have um, an infection or tissue damage, and then what, what happens is your capillary network, your blood vessels actually become a bit more um, gappy. So the, the endothelial cells, which make up your... Uh, blood vessels, your capillaries, they basically they, they create these gaps in response to various chemical messages, uh, messages that, that cells produce in response to infection or damage. 
Um, and so that allows fluid out of the blood vessel into the tissue. Um, so obviously the red blood cells won't escape because they're too large to, to fit through the gaps. Um, but that's essentially what edema is. You know, it's, it's, it's fluid pooling into tissue as a result of infection or tissue damage. Um, you can get in edema in other forms as well. Like for example, for example, excuse me, um, if there's not enough protein in your blood, um, if you're malnourished, for example, you'll, you'll tend to see you'll have a distended abdomen if you're malnourished, and that's because there's not enough protein in your blood. Um, so there's, it's, it's basically to do with osmosis and things like that, where there's not enough osmotic pressure to put fluid from the tissue back into your blood vessel. So I rather suspect that we're seeing edema here, obviously, because of the, the immense pressure um, that, that's, that's, that it's putting on the, the ear canal. So you can see I'm just lifting the skin here. Again, another um, kind of diagnostic kind of characteristic of keratosis obturans is obviously it's very painful that's number one number two you often see bleeding when you try and remove it and three the keratin plug so the main offending character will be enveloped in this kind of white pale kind of silvery matrix of dead skin so this is almost certainly a positive case um, and it, the, the difficult thing is you never really know you're dealing with it until you actually start digging it out so obviously I mean, you could order a CT scan, and if you see an enlargement of the, the, the ear canal, then that might give you a clue. Um, but otherwise, you can never really be certain it's keratosis obturans until, until you actually start seeing the effect of, of it on the ear canals. You're removing bits and pieces. Um, so again, you can see this, the white debris there, just, on, just as it, it's kind of wrapping round like a present, the, um, the keratin plug. Um, so, I mean, going into this case, I was fairly suspicious already just due to the, the, the pain factor. And um, if you rewind the video, you'll see also kind of a sheath, kind of like a little bubble of um, dead skin. That was also kind of a, a warning sign. Um, so again, as, as long as it's not a hugely um, complicated case um, and the patient is fairly placid, then you can remove it without anesthetic. Um, so they just, I can't, it's difficult to say whether there's any bone remodeling going on here. I don't think so, but it's very difficult to tell because of the edema. Um, and by bone remodeling, I, I literally do mean sometimes when you have keratosis obturans, a really bad case, the actual outward pressure from the keratin plug um, basically makes the ear canal enlarge, as I said, and that's because that pressure stimulates special cells inside the, the, that bone called osteoclasts or osteoclasts, whatever you want, how, however you want to pronounce it. And um, those are special cells which break down bone. So essentially you'll see this enlarged um, ear canal. So it's not, not, not quite the same as bone erosion, um, but it's a kind of, if you like, a kind of a controlled enlargement of the, of the bone. So not like a canal cholesteatoma. So here we, we still have this very dark piece of, of um, debris and I'm fairly certain at this point that the eardrum is directly on the other side of that. Again, patient is very um, tolerant of, of this procedure. So you can see I'm just peeling it away here. And as soon as I see the eardrum, what I'm going to do is stop because, you know, obviously we don't want to keep on poking and peeling and peeling and, and so on and so forth because, it, again, we're gonna, we don't want to cause more bleeding than we need to. And again, we don't want to, you know, make this patient jump out of his seat if we poke and prod too far. So. When we see the eardrum, then I'll be happy. Um, so going in here, you can see just kind of beyond the keratin plug, like sort of if you go south of the plug, um, you can see it looks a little bit gooey. That was rather suspicious. Um, but again, if I can just grab this piece here. Okay, so now we can just about see the drum and I'll point it out to you. And I'm pretty sure it's just to the right of the suction probe. There it is. So I did touch it a little bit, just as I just went in there but that's the eardrum right there. That kind of grayish debris right in the center, debris, sorry, that grayish tissue. Now to be sure, what I'm gonna do is ask the patient to do a Valsalva maneuver. And what that is, is to do a Valsalva maneuver, it's like popping your ears basically. If there are any divers out there or frequent flyers, what you have, you'll know this, but what you have to do is you pinch your nose with your mouth closed and your nose pinched, obviously, you have to try and blow through your nose like that, and you should hear your ears pop. 
what you're doing is essentially blowing air up your eustachian tube. Because it has nowhere to go, it can't escape out of your mouth or nose, so it has nowhere to go but up the eustachian tube to your middle ear. So watch there, that's the drum. I'm asking the patient to do a valsalva maneuver, and you should see it deflect outwards towards the endoscope, towards the, the screen, basically. Did you see that? That's when he did the, the, uh, the valsalva maneuver. So I know that that's the eardrum. I know, thank goodness, it's intact. Um, and, you know, happy days. So there we go. That's, that's where I cut the, that's where I ended the procedure. Um, patient was just, you know, unbelievably happy, relieved. His ear felt, you know, much, much better. His hearing was pretty much back to normal, or so he said. Um, I did catch up with him a few days later um, over the phone. He was absolutely 100% pleased and, and his, all his symptoms had gone. You know, no more painkillers, no more discomfort, you know, no more sleepless nights. Now, um, you may be wondering what's going to happen to the keratin that's still in there. So it, whilst it's resolved his symptoms, um, the keratin really should be removed. Um, so what I've done is I've referred this chap to uh, an ear, nose and throat consultant who will follow up, who will take another look at the ear um, and go in and, and remove that keratin under a, an operating microscope. But uh, there we go. I thought that was a very interesting case. Obviously, it's not the um, sort of, you know, classic earwax removal video where it just kind of comes out and everything's beautiful afterwards. It's not that. But it is a very interesting case. And it's a nice follow on from the video that I uh, published a while ago the video that I'll link to down below, it's a pre-keratosis obturans ear, so it shows what an ear would look like before getting to this state. Um, so, very interesting. I hope you found this enjoyable. Uh, thank you very much for watching, liking and subscribing. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments section below and I will try my very best to get back to you and I will see you on the next video.